Where should a power head be placed in an aquarium? Finding the right spot for a power head or wave pump in your tank can depend on a number of different factors. For example, gyro pumps tend to do best up near the surface, while propeller pumps often provide better flow when placed further down. The shape or dimensions of your tank also come into play, along with whether or not you have substrate. The placement of other structures within the aquarium, like your rock work, are also a factor. So how do you decide on the best spot or even spots for your circulation pumps? Well, I'll go ahead and let the cat out of the bag right now. No matter where you place your pumps in your tank to start with, there is an extremely high likelihood that you're gonna end up adjusting their placement over time. If not right away, certainly as your tank starts to fill in with corals, or if you notice spots where debris starts collecting. So I guess what I'm saying is, instead of telling you this is where you should put your pumps, full stop, I'll show you a really great starting point for where you can place your pumps, as well as what to look for to see where you might be able to improve your flow and where you can make adjustments so you can get your flow perfect for your tank. I'll also give you a super solid trick that lets you literally see the flow inside of your tank without the use of these little beads, which can be super helpful for identifying those low flow areas before they become a problem. First off, different styles of wave pump are gonna perform best in different places in the aquarium. Like I was mentioning earlier, gyre pumps tend to do best when placed horizontally across the top of the tank just below the surface of the water, usually on either end of the tank. On the other hand, propeller pumps that create a wide cone of flow tend to perform best when they're somewhere within the middle third of the tank's height and placed either in front of or behind the rock structures inside of the aquarium. There are also specialized pumps that allow you to change their flow characteristics and in turn where their optimal placement should be. So first and foremost, check your pump's user manual or quick start guide and follow those recommendations to pick a suitable position for that particular pump. The next step is to figure out where in your tank you need the most flow. The obvious answer for a reef tank is where the majority of your corals are, which is typically in front of your rockwork. But you may also find that you'd like some flow behind your rockwork as well to help prevent debris from settling there. Maybe your overflow system and return pump don't create as much surface agitation as you'd like, and having a pump to ripple the surface for better gas exchange is also a priority. Identifying areas like these that might need more flow will help you decide where your pumps will need to be placed, which will also help you figure out how many pumps you might need. With a rough idea of where you want to add flow and the number of pumps you need to use in your hands, you can start placing them across from those areas that you need to target. Now, with that said, I do have a preferred pump placement configuration that I generally use regardless of where I think I need flow in the tank that generally nets me some really great results that I can build off of. So I'll share those configurations with you now using one, two, and four propeller style wave pumps to give your corals what they're looking for. Then I'll touch on some other great placement ideas to tackle surface agitation and keep detritus suspended so it makes it into your filtration system. With a single pump, your best bet is to place it on the end panel of the aquarium furthest from the return from your filtration, about halfway down and about halfway between the front of the rockwork and the front panel of the tank. This placement will get that cone of flow out in front of the corals where it can help bring food to them while removing waste and debris and also helping to get as much water moving throughout the entire tank as possible. Don't be surprised though if you find yourself looking at adding another pump down the line. A single pump can work pretty well on its own in smaller tanks, but as corals fill in and grow, it becomes more difficult to provide enough flow between those corals with just a single pump. With a pair of pumps, we're doing essentially the same thing, but one pump will be placed slightly higher up and offset towards the front of the tank, while the other will be on the opposite end, slightly lowered down and offset towards the rockwork. With a second pump and a slight offset in both directions, those cones of flow will fill a larger area while also colliding with one another to create some random and chaotic flow patterns in and around your corals. If you're working with four pumps, a similar offset placement is an excellent starting point. On one side of the tank, one pump is higher up and to the front, while the other is lower and towards the rockwork. And on the other end of the tank, the pumps do the opposite. The top pump is towards the rockwork, while the lower pump is towards the front panel. You get the same benefits as the two pump configuration, just doubled up. 
With the pumps in the tank, you can plug them in, give them a few minutes to start running and circulating all of that water, and then you can look around the tank, check the corals to see which are getting enough flow, which might be getting too much or even too little, check to see if there are any patches of substrate that are getting moved around, and then you can make small adjustments to the placement of those pumps until you find that happy medium. And you can literally visualize the flow patterns inside of the aquarium by dosing a fluorescent additive. My personal choice for this job is Red Sea's AB Plus Coral Food. You can pour that daily dose for your tank into the pumps and watch how quickly it's dispersed, where it goes first, if any spots take longer than others to receive that glowing liquid, and that could also help you identify low flow areas or problematic spots that could use some extra attention before they actually become a problem. With your main flow pumps now in place and delivering all of the flow that your corals are gonna require, you can then focus on added flow for things like boosting surface agitation or keeping debris suspended. If you end up finding that the surface of the water isn't moving as much as you'd like or that your pH tends to be low, adding more surface agitation can help increase gas exchange and oxygenation. If you already have enough flow inside the tank, you could also dedicate the return nozzle from your filtration to surface agitation by pointing it upwards. On the other hand, if you're finding specific spots in your tank are piling up with mulm and debris, you can place pumps on the back panel of the tank towards the bottom or even the side panels, but behind the rock work at the back of the tank rather than in front to help get those dead spots moving, which will help keep that detritus suspended in the water column where it can find its way into your tank's filtration system. For those reefers with bare bottom tanks, placing pumps in these areas is incredibly helpful. Something else that's actually incredibly helpful is knowing the seven major categories of flow pump and how they're different from one another, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, so you can apply those pumps properly to your tank and also buy the correct pumps from the beginning to meet your aquarium's goals. And Ryan and Randy have an awesome video breaking all of that down right here, the Powerhead Buyer's Guide. Have a watch, it's, it's honestly, it's gonna open your eyes to the world of aquarium pumps and power heads that you didn't even know existed so that you can make an educated choice. And that's the best kind of choice to make in this hobby. Saves us money in the long run. Check it out.